Hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. It's not the rules. I know the real reason they won't let me see mommy. What real reason? It's because I'm adopted. If I was a real child, they'd bet me. <sighs> Christopher, the hospital rules have nothing to do with you being adopted. How do you know? Because I do. I don't believe it. Hey, guys. Joshua Harris here, Christopher Ewing on Dallas. I'm very excited to announce that I'm gonna be joining some of my former castmates at the South Fork Experience at the one and only South Fork Ranch in Parker, Texas on October 25th through the 27th. It's the first time I'm gonna be back at the ranch in over 30 years, so I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna have some fun. It's gonna be barbecues and a brunch. You can take a house tour. There's going to be an amazing auction for the Yellow Rose Foundation. We're going to do some meet and greets, take some pictures, and then on Saturday night, we're going to get a special performance by Josh Henderson and his band. That's going to be awesome. So go to SouthForkExperience.com, check out the different packages. You can choose your own adventure from VIP to day passes. It's all there. SouthForkExperience.com. We'll see you in October. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue Podcast, a, uh, another edition of the DOA, again, not dead on arrival, uh, although some people are, uh, South Fork Experience Series. Today we have Joshua Harris, Christopher Ewing, uh, Christopher Ewing number two, I should say, <laughs> joining us. So we are a pair of Joshes yeah. right here, right now. <laughs> um, welcome. How's it going? <laughs> Uh, it's going well, Josh. How was? Uh, where are you at? You're in. You're in Texas, right? Are you in Dallas? I'm in. Bo I'm in Boston. So. Okay, I just imagine. I just imagine you're in Dallas. Can we just pretend you're in Dallas? All right. All right. I'm. I'm at South Fork right now. <laughs> so. Um, now you gotta. So you into, uh, the, into the vibe a little bit. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. So you got. Uh, you have. You've been brought on for the uh, South Fork experience here, and. Uh, Obviously, you you haven't you said you in your uh, in your video that I'm putting in at the beginning of this that you haven't been there in thirty years, I guess at least. Yeah, is that correct? Uh, I, we we stopped going out. Yeah, well, there's a bit of delay here, Josh. I don't know. No, nope, that's, that's fine. On your end or my end, but hopefully the audience. Okay. Um, yeah. So the last. The last couple seasons, if I'm not mistaken, we didn't go out to South Fork for the exteriors. I think they might have had enough in the can. But what I remember is I think we stopped going out there, you know, I don't know, seasons 11 or something or 12. So I haven't, I don't think I've been out there since, uh, since that season. So I was probably somewhere in the, you know, 10 or 11 years old. You do the math, right? I'm obviously 25 now, so I don't know how that works, but I'm still 21. So how did, how did you pass me in age? Uh, <laughs> and uh, what do you remember? The reverse osmosis in Hollywood. A exactly, exactly. You get younger as you as you drink the water. Um, what do you remember mm -hmm. about being out there when you were filming? Um, not much. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was, uh, you know, it, it, during that time, it, like everything was so, when you're a kid, it's like, that's just what you do, right? It was just inundated. Oh, I do have a memory. I lied. Oh, I liar. remember <laughs> very vividly. I, I'm a huge liar, so you'll find out. Uh, <laughs> very vividly, there were some incredible storms that used to come in over the summers that we were out there filming. 
And I believe we stayed at the Marriott. I don't know. Don't quote me, but I remember the Marriott and I remember the production office being on, I don't know, uh, it was several floors up and that was like the home base of the hotel. So we would stay there. We'd get all the things we needed at the hotel and then we'd go to set. But I remember us having to either come back or we didn't go to set that day because the storms were coming in and we, Omri and I had so much fun hiding under the tables in the production office, watching this insane lightning storm wind <laughs> and all this rain coming in. It was like one of the most severe storms I'd ever seen as a kid because in, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. So, you know, we don't get anything like that. So mm -hmm. I just remember it being, you know, horribly, you know, it was, it was a crazy storm. I mean, I mean we're having st crazy storms right now, so I don't want to mitigate any of those. But uh, for a kid right. at that time, never having been in a storm of that magnitude, uh, you know, that was that was pretty memorable. Um, in terms of South Fork itself, uh, itself uh, we swam in the pool some. We did some horseback riding. I remember learning how to lasso uh, out on the ranch um, because mm -hmm. we had some scenes where we had to actually, you know, use lassos and not riding in lasso, but whether we had to learn or for whatever, for the scene, just a lot of outdoor activities. Um, and then right. some so of the big buildings on property as well. So you're ready for Yellowstone now. You you know how to lasso. You can <laughs> you can jump over there. I, um, I've been ready. Nobody's called me. Yeah, I'm ready. Nobody's called. Well, you can replace Kevin Costner. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously there are bigger storms going on now that we have in the country. Um, but uh, yeah, getting out there and um, you worked with uh, Victoria for two years and then she left and then you were with Patrick most of the time. What do you, what do you remember about, uh, Victoria? Uh, um, man, are these the questions that everyone wants to know? I don't think that's the question everyone wants to know at all. Uh, you've got all this time to prepare and you just want to know what I think of Victoria. Come on, man. No, no, I'm, um, I'm, you and Barbie I'm, sli I'm, sli I'm sliding in. You're a baseball player. I'm, I'm, go I'm going. I'm going to throw the softballs first and then oh, go no, for the no, hard ball. Good. I'm teasing you. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Uh, no, look, you know, we, all the cliches sort of exist on this show in terms of Omri. And I want to speak for Omri, but I know he feels the same way. We had, we were really lucky. I mean, we were on an adult show, right? I mean, let's be honest. It was, we were we were part of something way bigger than we could even fathom at the time. It was our experience and we have our, our time on the show, which was very important to our, our youth and all the things, but I don't have a bad thing to say about anything that happened on anything to do with Dallas. Like it's, it's remarkable. You hear about all the horror stories in our industry. I don't know what Leonard Katzman created in that safe space of the people and the crew and the cast. It was the loveliest time of my I, I look back on it and it, there was never an instance where it's like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Like everything was awesome. Like you have to you have to put yourself in this time when everything's going well for this show. Like it's the biggest thing in the world. But I don't know that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm a kid. You, and you were eight, 10 years old. That sort of thing. <laughs> like that is. Literally... Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're six on your first day of, of set, like I don't. I didn't ask to be an like I'm thrust into this world that I'm very lucky to be a part of. How, how did you and get it? How did you get in all there? I want to do? Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, all oh. I wanted to ever do was throw a ball. Um, that was my thing. Like sports was so important to me that I would run around the set. And I don't know if anyone remembers this, but Literally, I would just throw the ball to the AD, and then they'd throw it back to me in between takes, and Omri and I would go off and play catch. So they tried to create as much of a young place for young people as possible on a very, very popular grown-up environment. So I love Victoria. Victoria was amazing to me. Patrick was, you know, my second dad. Like, th that's really what it was. Nobody ever did anything that would have – turned and turned ahead the wrong way so great experience that's to mm -hmm. sum that up back to you right okay back to you back to you in the studio um 
No, how how did you? You said you like playing catch and so how did you end up in the business? Uh, was it was it your choice? Did they or your parents or how did that come about? I know you you started on uh, yeah you started on um, a death in California. You had a Let's two episode mini series, and then you were on Falcon Crest uh, for a few episodes. Saint Elsewhere. Uh, Twin Peaks, Dallas, Dallas, of course, 108 episodes. Uh, so yeah, your your entrance into the business. Uh, as we all do, I mean, it's a different day and age now because you know you can become famous on social platforms and such and get noticed. But back in the day, the story goes: uh, my parents were on a cruise. Uh, they were having a chat with some people that happened to be, uh, talent agents. Uh, I have two, two sisters and they saw pictures of all of us and it was just your standard, Hey, you know, bring them by the office. Let's see, you know, see if they're interested in the business. And, uh, my parents put it off and then I guess they reached out about a year after that. I was about four at the time. So when I was around five, I believe we went in and they signed all three of us to be repped by them. And then you just start going out on auditions and there's no rhyme or reason other than a look at that point and someone that can actually, you know, be on set and deliver a line here or there that anyone gets a job. Um, so I guess I had some, some, you know, looks for various things and, you know, just got lucky. And then, you know, I, I got, I think my first job was a Honda scooter commercial um when i was the day i turned six i got my first job um yeah. and yeah and it just kind of uh you just you just got audition and no i did not ask to be in the industry i never i was a very shy kid i think it was a cool thing for my parents to just want to like try and see if it stuck and something that we wanted to do and then it just turned into something that was a little bit bigger than anyone anticipated right and you were grew up playing baseball. So were you playing baseball throughout this time or did you come back to that in high school? And, and then yeah, obviously you went to the Cubs um, and you were uh, I was... Barry Zito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, um, I was just always, I was kind of sports inclined. I, I, I was always smaller than most of my peers, but I, I loved playing catch with my dad and, I played basketball and soccer and baseball. I was very quick. It was very small, but quick. Um, but I, you know, for my size, I was, I was fairly, uh, I was fairly good. Um, and I just loved it. I mean, sports was, you know, was the, the one thing that I, you know, I, I didn't ask to be an actor, but sports was the thing I wanted to do. And uh, as a kid, we all try different sports and see what sticks. And I tried everything, you know, um, and baseball just kind of kept being the, the conduit. Um, so I was playing every time I got a chance, I was in a league or, you know, my dad would be coaching the team or um, I'd, you know, be on some sort of team. And, uh, and yeah, so you just sort of climb the ranks in terms of, you know, levels and all-star teams and I'm doing pretty decently. And then it, it goes from there. And, and at some point you have to decide as an athlete, where your loyalties lie in terms in terms of your time, and that was sort of where I was when I was when I entered high school, which was uh, you know you have to focus either on full full time acting, which I had done for so long, um, or here's this thing that you've always been chasing, and now it's going to require all this time after school, all the things you have to do in order to be be good enough for colleges, and if you're lucky enough if you're lucky enough colleges and then if even more lucky to get to the next level. Um, so that's sort of where I was around 14, 15, um, had to make a decision. Right. And obviously you have to keep up the, the skills and, and you got to keep up your grades too, because you're, you're going to get cut from the team if you don't keep the grades up. So it's really double the amount on yeah. your plate. Uh, and then you obviously ended up with the Cubs, but, um, in the minor league system, what uh, what stopped that career? Because I know you pivoted and now you're behind the scenes and we'll get in, 
obviously get into Good what question. drew you behind the scenes as well to from in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a question that I think all players have to make at some point um, or an answer they have to, they have to, they're confronted with. And when you get to a specific level, if you're playing division one college, if you're playing college at all, you're sort of separated from, okay, you're, you're, I don't want to say you're at an elite level, but you're at a, you're in an advanced level. And then to get to any sort of version of the pros is even, I, I don't know, it might be even harder than making it in Hollywood. Like it's so, <laughs> it's so hard that that was never, I never expected that. It was one of these things where I did really well in school and college. I had put up really good numbers and then you hope that a team, you know, I'm a smaller in stature. So you hope that a team recognizes your abilities and then you get a chance. Um, that's all I was, I ever really wanted was a chance. And, and you get to a place inside an organization and that I was lucky enough to be a part of and say that I was able to do. And everybody is great. And we're talking the best of the best around not only, I mean, it's a, it's mostly an American sport, you know, we call it a, the world series, but it's only a couple countries. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, players from around the world, you know, Venezuela and Dominican, you know, huge influx of amazing athletes at that level are the best of the best. And then it's a business. Um, so I got mm -hmm. picked up by the Cubs and I played, I, I did really well. And that's a longer story, but the, the opportunity was yeah. there. But then at the same time, I realized I was, my trajectory was not that of, let's say a, a kid out of high school, high school gets, gets a huge signing bonus. So I got to a place where I kind of just looked at myself and, and, and there's Mary, Mary just Mary's here. Into the, the feed here. <laughs> we are talking about his, I'm just, uh, I'm just bulging my, my life trauma baseball to, uh, career. Josh here. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we're on the more important Continue. part, which is the baseball stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I just got to a point where um, I kind of saw the writing on the wall is a bad way of saying I could have stuck it out. But I didn't want to be and this is not to say anyone else's journey isn't their own. But in my eyes, I'd gotten to this thing, and I could have stuck it out and played around and tried to bang around the minors and make it to the show. At that point, to be honest, I was, uh, my arm was hurting quite a bit and, um, I, I, I didn't want to be a lifelong minor leaguer and people mm -hmm. that do that, that, that God bless them. That's a t tough grind. You don't make much money. You're traveling all the time. It's a lot of work. Um, crappy hotels. Not that I didn't want to put in the work, but I thought, what's that? Crappy hotels, uh, <laughs> In the minor oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, hotels, it's like not even a, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Um, but yeah, so you get to a point where I, at least I got to a point, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I got to a point where I could see my trajectory not being that of, um, a fast track and I didn't want to be in the, my, you know, late twenties, early thirties, still trying to make it, um, when I'm very easily, you know, swept to the side, even though I hit over 300 and did well in the minors. Um, I had sort of crossed that thing off the, my bucket list. Um, at that time I'm rambling here, mm -hmm. but that's, that's the, the gist I, I asked for, I asked for my release from the Cubs, um, maybe a little prematurely, but sort of at a, at a point where I was just like, all right, you know, I got to make a decision. Right. You, you made your decision and you ended up, uh, behind the scenes. What, what fascinated you about going behind the camera? I know you've done, uh, I've just been looking at your credits here and you've, uh, you did some stuff with duck dynasty for a little while too, as a, a story producer. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, and, uh, don't rattle off my credit. Yeah. You're not allowed to look at my credit list. Um, that is, that is a <laughs> but, tiny, uh, tiny part of my, ex <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, what, what, well, yeah. What brought you, behind the camera instead of going back in front of the camera where you had been before. Um, I never thought I was going to pursue acting. I, I actually, funny enough, around the time I was, I don't think many people know this, but around the time I was 
18, 19 in between sort of college seasons when I was in the uh, sort of summertime, I toyed with the notion of like, oh, I'll just, you know, maybe get some headshots and, you know, see what happens this summer, you know, make some money or something, you know, it was so easy when I was a kid. And at that age, you're up against the biggest names in Hollywood, because when you're 18, 19, you're now playing a young man and an adult. Um, I was no longer the kid on the show. So you're going up against, name it, Leo DiCaprio, like for roles that you're just like, oh, okay, yeah, that I need he to was actually up, He take was up this for Omri's role in Hocus Pocus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you're you're legitimately these are these are career professionals that are doing big things that you're getting and and you you sort of you had success at a young age and in my mind it was like okay i'll just you know ride on that coattail a little bit just to get just to get past that first phase of interviews or get to the producers and stuff on projects and and my my management at that time and little did i know i think at that time i don't know when the hollywood the the JR returns movie came back or when that was, but I feel it might've been around that time. Um, I kind of was like, let's, I just try this and see if it works. And, and it, I went on a few auditions and realized how <laughs> unprepared I was for all of these auditions and was like, Oh yeah. Baseball season's about to start. Uh, let's just hang this up again. So in my mind, I'd kind of put that chapter aside and, um, not to say that behind the scenes was ever a calling to me until I got a, I, I started working at a production company and I got a job after baseball, not really sure what I wanted to do, to be completely honest. I had my degree, I actually had to go back and get my final semester after I was playing pro ball uh, at my school, finished that. So I had my business degree, didn't quite know what I wanted to do. And the thing I knew was the industry. I didn't set out to go back into the industry, but it was, it was where I was comfortable. Little did I know I knew nothing about the other side of the camera. Um, you just figure you grew up on a set, you're very comfortable on a set. At least I figured that. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll be a producer or see what that looks like. Um, all the people on sets were always so nice to me. This should be easy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you just sort of like, go where I was working for a production company, cutting my teeth and just like kind of learning the trade and how to put things together and, and find some version of my style, if you will, or what I wanted to do. And, um, and had some good people that I, I kind of learned from. And then very shortly after that paved kind of my own path to start my own company. And you've done great things for yourself and your company. I've been, following that um what uh yeah, one role i just remember i just have to bring oh which shirt? one is let's see can you see the shirt is it backwards oh god <laughs> i don't know if you... it's because i'm adopted <laughs> is it because i'm adopted is it because i'm adopted oh god i i was, so I was, did, yeah, did you have uh, that made up I, or was that a gift i uh I had this made because I was I was joking around with 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 Omri and and uh, some people and I was like I have so many ideas for shirts and and we got the <laughs> South Fork experience coming up which we haven't even talked about. But I, I like, know, I know. Wouldn't it be funny if I had some stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, just, I had this awesome. made. I, I have so many. I have to. Oh my God, Mary! I have so many. <laughs> ideas for a shirt so i'm i'm probably put these on a, like a little oh store or something Ma yeah, mary totally mary does yeah, shirts I, 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 yeah, I do shirts i can point you in the direction of how to do it do you amazing yeah so i was like mm -hmm. i was like i have so many funny things quippy things at least i think they're funny i don't know if anyone else will but i was like they might come off like oh, you can do. like if people don't get the joke they might come off the wrong way uh, so many funny sh uh, shirts that, that don't I, I then make, get it, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was cute and safe for, for the audience. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's perfect. I want one. As I saw on YouTube, there was a, cl <laughs> there was a, a montage of you just going on about being adopted. Every, every clip was just cut together. It's cause I'm adopted. Uh, I'm adopted. That, <laughs> I know. I, I, well, that's <laughs> and oh and you know what? 
You know what? When uh, sorry, I cut you off, Mary. But uh, <laughs> it's funny when people say that because the truth of the matter is, I did say that a lot. It's because I'm adopted. Sure. She doesn't love me anymore because I'm adopted. Is it because I'm adopted? But I'm adopted, and you weren't just adopted. Because that was like. I guess that's the safety net for the writers when any sort of conflict came up with Christopher was, was it had to be because he was adopted. That was right. always like the fallback plan. Um, so I just think it's funny looking back on it now, right. X amount of year. It's like, yeah, that seemed to be the through line. And it's funny how many times you said it. And yet something like, I know to compare uh, on the Brady Bunch, Jan w said her tagline was Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And she only said that once in one right. episode, and that became her her tagline. But, but they never iconic. used it again, right? Yeah, I don't think I'm. I don't think this is as iconic as Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. But maybe we will give it a resurgence, and we oh, will, we have we to will groundswell it, and then oh, yeah, we'll we have will to. make it a thing. When we get Thank to you. those seasons, I'm gonna make that exactly. Thing. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to mention yeah, one I'm role right. that. Uh, that I, I just want to bring up uh, that you played in um, it was Go Towards the Light when you played the uh, young young boy with yes. AIDS and uh, Linda Hamilton was your mother and I think it was yes. Richard Thomas was your father Have you ever heard of the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome? has AIDS. 85% of all AIDS patients are dead within a year. You're not the only person in Ben's life. My son is dying. that uh good one that yeah. was that was probably one of your most powerful performances uh because it was coming out at the time of the hemophilia and the ryan whites and all those kids with aids in schools and just being tortured basically for their uh so do you have memories of that particular experience and what that was like just before we move into yeah. the whole south fork yeah vivid um yeah, yeah, no, that I, I would I would chalk that up as probably my most difficult yet the most proud role I've ever undertaken and been fortunate enough to to have done. Um, I was eight, and I don't know I don't know how my eight year old self was able to do that role. To be completely honest, just looking back on you know being on the other side of the camera, like trying to find someone that can do. There's kid actors these days that are amazing but you know um having never really done a lot of formal acting training or anything like that i go i'm pretty proud of that let's put it that way if i'm gonna pat myself on the back for anything i feel that was a role that came out of nowhere i went through a pretty strenuous casting process it was probably the first time i'd ever been like understood what the the process was and this amazing story where the family was involved and and, and ben euler was the first child in in California to contract AIDS through hemophilia. So mm -hmm. hemophilia is a blood oh, disorder. Wow. 
and that whole thing, yeah. learning about that as an eight year old, you know, trying to trying to grasp what that is, um, is 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 a very like powerful experience. And uh, and yeah, that was like the you know the the first time a show, a movie, anything I'd done was sort of centered around me. Um, so there was a lot of work, a lot of um, a lot of amazing things, memories that I still have from making snow in Topanga Canyon, like the house that we used as like, uh, <laughs> you know, that we used as our like winter house. It was literally in Los Angeles and they bumped, you know, as a kid, that's the coolest thing you've ever, you've ever done. Um, yeah. So from the hardships and, and, and the fun of that movie, that was probably like the pinnacle or penultimate moment of my acting career um, in terms of like, really being a part of something that, that I'm proud of. Yeah. And that, awesome. that movie is uh, on YouTube, I discovered. So if anyone wants to watch that, it's, it's powerful yeah. viewing. It's definitely powerful viewing. Um, Josh, one so, of the, one of the things that a lot of people have said over the years have is as they grew up, that movie, I guess, was shown in their schools, uh, which I didn't know, but it was like Ooh. the go to like educational film for a lot of students to learn about, you know, what the AIDS virus was at the time, because it was, you know, it was so prevalent and it was just, people were scared yeah. of it. Um, but also it was like, Hey, this is, this is this thing that it's not just, uh, a, what you may believe about this thing, but it, it affects people in a certain way. And the family at this, the, the, the family was on set with me during that whole time. It was part of the, part of the process. I got to know them. Um, the Euler mm. family, and they were just really lovely and accepted me as, you know, we're on, I was honored to be able to play, play Ben in that. Yeah. Mm. And that, I know that, and uh, the Ryan White story are, were in schools a lot too, with Judith Light and Lucas Haas. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, absolutely. Um, yeah. Those were the kind of the two, I met Ryan um, in a, when I was doing a charity event um, it's just a, you know, a lovely community when people, when Hollywood gets around a cause, it really is for the right reasons. And, and it was important during that time, I think, you know, again, in retrospect, I don't know this when I'm eight <laughs> looking at it, but, you know, another lovely experience that, um, that we got to sort of just be part of, you know, that you, you get, you get windows into these worlds that, that you're lucky to be a part of and part of your own journey as, as people on this planet. Mm. Which brings us to another journey, your journey to fan conventions. Uh, your first journey, was, journey was, Burba was, was Burbank your first uh, one of these uh, that you got involved with? First one. Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, the Hollywood how did it show come up? earlier this year. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Omri, Omri called me. Um, Omri and I have become, we well, not become, we've stayed friends over the years. He was at my wedding. He's a good buddy of mine. Um, love the guy dearly. And he's been on the Hocus Pocus journey uh, as he should be for a while. And he's done a few of the events and he just, he hit me up and he's just like, hey, there's this thing in Burbank, you know, uh, do you want me to put you in touch? And over the years, I've sort of you know, for, for one reason or another, I haven't turned things down. Sorry, my computer just slipped. No, right. um, I haven't turned things down. I just haven't, I haven't been a, a approached for a lot of things. And maybe people just thinking I'm out of reach or whatever that is. Um, and, you know, I'm getting to an, an age where uh, it's okay to do fun stuff in my, in my eyes about the things that, you know, there's a, it was like a, I've always looked at it as sort of like a separate chapter. It's like, oh, that's behind me, or for no other reason other than I'm doing different things. But I also miss a lot of the people that you know I grew up around and haven't seen them in so long. I think Patrick's the only person, Patrick and Omri, the only people I've seen um, at any point after Dallas over the years, really. Um, so it was just really you know an opportunity to say um, or, or have the opportunity to, to see everyone. And then, you know, meet some fans, you know, there's, there's a lot of fans that are obviously, you know, hopefully watching this and we're coming out to South Fork, but um, that I just haven't interacted with um, just for one reason or another. And, and yeah, I thought it was time to just have, <laughs> try, try something new, you know, we're not getting younger, so might as well. 
Well, it's the nostalgia of our forties, I think. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um I think there's there's that I don't know, there's this like um this this need to reconnect, you know, and especially, you know, as we all get mm-hmm. older and the, the you know, Patrick and Linda who I hadn't seen in so long, that was a driving force for me personally. I know all the fans came out to see them, but like hey, you know, yeah. just just the impact yeah. that those years make on, you know, a young person, you know, six, totally. seven years. Mm-hmm. That's, that was, you know, Omri and I spent, at the time we both were off Dallas, we had spent over half of our lives on that show. And right. those are formidable and years. Most of so, the life that you remember. Yeah, totally. for sure. Yeah. I mean, you start, you know, getting those memories. There he is. There um, you are. And it was just like, I did. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, to be completely honest. And I was kind of like. I like to stay, not that I have some (laughs) rabid fan base or anything, but I just, I I guess I'm kind of private and in a way that, you know, I just stay in my lane. And it was an opportunity to sort of get out of my lane. And it it was a wonderful experience. and, And I talked to a lot of amazing people. Well, we had Patrick on, um, a couple of weeks ago and he said that like his the favorite thing about that was that he got to see you. What? So out of all the people there, Patrick. Out of all the people there, <laughs> Patrick, are you? <laughs> that is that. See, that warms my heart. That, honestly, that warms my heart because um, I haven't. We haven't had a chance to sort of like. We I, you know, it goes back to the baseball and the Barry Zito you re- reference. I saw Patrick. Um, as I was playing on my baseball team in college, his nephew, Barry Zito, he had come out and seen one of our games. So I had a fleeting moment with Patrick when I was, you know, 18, 19, where we got to say hi. And then I saw him again mm-hmm. at a Father's Day, acad- this academy thing we did, where it was a father's, you know, famous Father's Day uh, event. That was the first time I'd, I'd seen Patrick in forever. Th- and then, was that Christine uh, and Lincoln then, was there too? March? I don't remember when the event was. Yeah. What's that? I think Christine Lakin was at that too, Say uh, that again? step by step. I think she uh, turned up at that Father's Day. I think Day Christine thing. was at it. Yes, I think that's where I, yes. I, yes, yes, we both did that. We we surprised Patrick. It was like John Cryer, and I think Dick Van Dyke was on stage. It was like famous fathers of TV at the Academy uh, of uh-huh. Arts and Sciences. And again, one of these opportunities. So going back is, I I love Patrick. Like he was. You know, his sons were like my my brothers on set, you know, like when they would come, they, I felt like I was part of their family. And uh, there was always this closeness with Patrick. He, he looked out for me a lot. And, you know, I missed that over the years um, for one reason or another. Our paths mm-hmm. haven't crossed since, uh, you know, as much as I'd like them to. So mm-hmm. uh, that thank you for saying that, Mary, because that means a lot. I didn't watch the, uh, the podcast. Now I, I will go. send you the clip. Okay. And I, oh, you, you mentioned please. it, and Steve also mentioned seeing you and Omri again was uh, a highlight for him in, when he was on a few weeks ago as well. So, uh, we, Now, we had the Amazing. privilege to yeah. attend um, the the dinner the night before, and uh, Sue Cabral was there. Oh, Mary, did we lose Josh? Yeah. Yeah, Josh, you're breaking up. I'm breaking up? You've been, do- All you've right. been trying to break up with me this whole call. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll I'll switch to my uh I'll switch to my phone. I'll switch to Riverside on the phone here. The fans so, want okay. the fans want you to Mary switch keep over go, keep Mary keep going. Keep going. Um Mary, all right. Go. So uh, <laughs> Come on, Mary. Um Let's go. This better be good. What are you most looking forward to um from this coming event, I guess? Oh my goodness. Other than seeing them. So the South Fork experience uh, is is sort of well, it'll be just be my second time, right, doing anything of this sort. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. You know what? Can I can I can I go back just a second and make this about me since Please. we're making it about me? Uh, of the, course. So. <laughs> the event <Please> in Hollywood. <laughs> the event in Hollywood is a Dallas specific. Oh, this is a great angle, John. There I am. Yes. There, that, yeah. Everybody wants to see that. Um. <laughs> So I had uh, when so I'd shown up. You know, I'd never done one of these 
uh, conventions where, you know, to meet people, I don't know what the table's supposed to look like. Omri's sort of coaching me through this whole thing. He's like, don't worry, you know, we have X yeah. and Y and people will just be able to come up and chat. Like, okay, cool. So I brought, uh, I don't know if I brought them or had them printed by the event, uh, but I had some Star Trek stuff. I had some Twin Peaks stuff and there was mm -hmm. as many Twin Peaks, Star Trek people, fans, oh, yeah. sorry, fans, um, that w as many as there were, you know, Dallas fans. And that to me was like, I forget how lucky I was to be part of some of these iconic shows, which oh, is yeah. like the, the fan base is still very, very alive and well in obviously the Star Trek community, mm -hmm. as well as the, the Twin Peaks community. And Twin that, that yeah. was exciting. Mary, so, so Mary is awesome. Twin Peaks. Mary is What's Twin that? Peaks. Mary, yes. is, uh... Mary and I spoke, spoke extensively about she, Twin she Peaks. Yes. <laughs> He's like, I'm done with right. Twin No, no. Twin Peaks is, Twin Peaks right. is awesome. I, uh, I, I remember when I got that role and my sister, my older sister was obsessed with the show and I had no idea what it was. And then I slowly realized like, oh wait, this is really cool. Um, and I became to like, that was one of the fun projects I've, I've done. But um, yeah, so South Fork, sorry, I got tangential there, but the South Fork experience again, I haven't been back there. I haven't had the opportunity to film a reunion show, uh, be invited on yeah. a, any anything out there. And I've always like had this little thing in my head it was like, it would be cool to to go back there one day and just see what it's like and see if any of the memories flood back, if I remember anything. Um, and mm -hmm. this opportunity came up and I was like, that is that that's perfect. And uh, and, and the fact that it's tied into you know, a fan event and we get, I get to see the cast again, you know, second time in, in the same year, like, you know, um, that's, uh, that's exciting. So yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm a little bummed. Omri's not going to be there. Um, he's in his, his pocket of, it's, it's of sweet, his sweet spot. Yeah. October's his sweet spot for, for, for all the Hocus Pocus <laughs> stuff. So, um, but yeah, I'm really excited to, to, to see nope. everyone. Yeah, we we uh, attended the dinner the night before, and Sue Cabral was there, as I started to say, with uh, right. the prop master, Carrie Scott Nair, and uh, yep. your on-set tutor, Sharon yeah. Sachs. Yep. What was it like seeing Sharon again after all this time? Same thing. I mean, these are great questions. I was like, oh, is Josh going to ask me what my favorite scene was? Not These are the good questions, Josh. That's why you do this. This is why you've made, I don't know, a career out of this? I don't know. Is this a hobby? <laughs> what are we doing here? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't write the questions down. I just pull them out of my head. Paid, so. it, it's just open. Yeah. You just go to chat GPT now. Right. Uh, so yeah, look, uh, you have to understand as a young, young person on a, on, we were in Lorimar, which is now Sony, it was MGM, but the Lorimar lot where we shot the interiors of all the, the, the stuff for the show. There's a room, there's a magic room for a kid on a set and it is the prop room and the prop room oh. has the toys and it has the cool stuff. And Carrie was the coolest person on set because he would let me in his office at any moment around the day to play with whatever toys he had in there. And his wall was covered in knickknacks and things that he could just grab and put into scenes right whether it was like glasses or um you know soda cans like everything you can imagine so i would just go in there like every week and see what new things he had and he would be like yeah go take it and it would be it would usually end up being like a tennis ball or something that i just want to take and throw against the wall but carry seeing carry again was amazing um sharon who was my teacher on set like that is one of the most important. Omri and I like spent so much time with Sharon um, and everyone's doing just so well. And it's like, it's kind of like a breath. It's like, oh, everyone's good. You know, it's like, these are the people that you want. You want to hear that. I know, you know, we've lost a lot along the way. You know, we were kids on the show. So, you know, that's going to come in time. And it's very sad to hear uh, this person or that person is no longer with us. But to see some people that, you hadn't seen since you were a child. Like it's, it, it it's exciting mm -hmm. and it's warms your heart. And I had no idea they were going to be there. So 
good kudos on on all that 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 was that was a great time they have great great stories um yeah it was fun you actually got to fire a gun on the show uh at one point uh at john ross by the pool uh <laughs> That, that was, I, I vaguely, that a... I very, I vaguely remember that. To be honest, I don't, I, I don't think I can recall. You'd think that'd be a core memory, right? Shooting my first gun or doing something right. like that. I almost, almost shooting Omri. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my mind, I've tried to shoot him a bunch um, when we play <laughs> sports because he would always beat me as a kid because he was a couple years older. But uh, no, um, I don't remember that. But yeah, uh, I think. I think we shot that on the soundstage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I, I don't actually remember uh, where or when that took place. Yeah. So we, um, just to bring it back home here, and yeah. as we get ready to wind down, um, got a full event, full lineup of events uh, for the weekend. They just posted the menu. Um, oh, I got to check that out. There are going to be some panels uh, hosted by William Keck, who actually brought you and Omri on oh, nice. the panel in uh, Burbank. Yeah, he's great. And, and you're, um, you're giving me info that I don't have. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, we're getting the A team here. <laughs> Will and then Keck, we got the, uh, the barbecue, the concert from Josh Henderson. We're being overrun by Josh's at the event this year. I mean, that's the true that's the real reason i'm going let's be honest is just to see josh perform and uh i think that's that's why all the fans are going right right of course yeah of course that's yeah. absolutely the whole point no that's gonna be exciting dude that's that's like uh you know i call i called josh um I, the, the hollywood event was the first time i'd met josh super nice guy but um omri was there which is like weird right uh so I call Josh Henderson 2.0 because he's he's the upgraded version nice. of Omri. So right, and I remember at one point they were initially they initially right. had no, the three. Well, anything I can do to jab Omri is is my job. So oh yeah, yeah, because they initially had the three of you were going to be in the same spot, and you were like, oh yeah, there's uh, John Ross and Hunky John Ross there, and. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I was, um, I was, I was a little bit, they, they realized my, my uh, social media following was not up to snuff. So they, they pushed me down the hall a little bit and uh, kept, <laughs> kept Josh Henderson up towards the entrance where everyone but, wanted to see. But, but, you, but you were near Kathy Podwell, who was kind enough to actually text you when I was with her a couple of weeks ago, just to get everything rolling. Yeah. Here, cause... Thanks a lot, Kathy. That's thank, your, thank um, you, Kathy, uh, I, I now, had Kathy. a, I had a social, I had a, uh, social media mishap with uh, some hackers. So I was not able to get through to you on Instagram to uh, contact you about coming on, but uh, thank you to Kathy for. Of course, Kathy is, yep. is the best. Yes. We love Kathy. Um, she and I are in touch and, and yeah, she's a, uh, she's the so, sweetest. So any, uh, any messages for the fans, anything that you want to, uh, part with before Mary, do you have anything more that you want to, uh, uh not really yeah i mean we'll, we'll talk yeah, more really boring. in a couple of weeks yeah we're, we're gonna be there we're gonna be filming everything basically we're gonna be doing live streaming social media and everything so i'm sure nice. we'll get some commentary from everybody on site and everything but uh yeah if you if you haven't gotten your tickets get those tickets and uh www.southforkexperience.com and get over there and see this guy. <laughs> see, come see me for, yes. We'll all just sit around and watch Josh Henderson perform. And that is all we really <laughs> want to do. Let's be honest. That'll be um, the best time. And, if, no, it's and, be and as, as, someone, as someone says the name Josh, three heads are going to turn. And actually Henderson's mm -hmm. bringing another friend named Josh. So there'll be four of well, us. That's so, why, uh, that's why let's establish this now. It's Joshua for all okay. intents and purposes, so I do not get swept up in the Josh mania. Although I could probably use okay. some of his social media followers. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, that's uh, that's everything we we've got here for uh, this episode of the Ewing Barbecue Podcast, uh, DOA South Fork Experience. I'm not sure what episode number this is. Thirteen, fourteen, somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
What's DOA? I don't understand this. Daughters of the Alamo. That was Sue Ellen's uh, ladies' luncheon thing that they did causes with Miss Ellie. and. Yeah, so then we thought it was just funny because it's our little, like, side conversation. I love it. Thanks. This so, this little like, super nerdy. thing you guys got, like, yeah, you guys are, have way more information about everything I did. You need to teach me about all the things that I did on the show because I don't remember. You guys have all the info. Right. You guys know it all. Yeah. <laughs> we have. We should bring them to. Uh, should bring them to Twin Peaks too. <laughs> I, I I have a meeting tomorrow. I actually was talking to them <laughs> about that, so we'll we'll see. Let's see. Let's talk. Hey, look, I'm I'm all on right. a roll here, so let's do it, Mary. Well, thank you for joining us tonight on the Ewing Barbecue Podcast special DOA episode. And we are, uh, uh, very excited. Excuse me. Very excited to uh, see everybody out at South Fork. Um, maybe someone else. Maybe you guys can give me a tour around there, and then we can uh, really, really. I don't know because the, the real place is different than the TV place. So <laughs> that's what I true. noticed. I've only been there twice. I, and it I was way I've different ever, than I thought. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been in. I don't remember ever going into that house. I think they didn't. They sh did they shoot in there like the this last season or the last series? I, I yeah, the 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 new series they did, but I think people were living in the house when the original series was on. Now they rent and you, it, I think they 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 rent it for like you can stay there overnight. You do the overnight. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I would love wow. to. I just can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that sounds cool. But uh, yeah, I'm sure there's lots of stories on the wall in there that people could tell. But yeah, I don't. The house we never oh. used. We used all our interiors were on the on the studio lot. But um, yeah, very cool piece of history. Yeah. I know you did exteriors, and then when they they would go to walk in the house, they would cut, and then they'd pick up three months later out in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Guess what? And I had no idea. That's what they did when I was <laughs> shooting the show. Everyone else, I'm sure, I thankfully knew what they were doing, but it just told me where I had to go in and go out. I had no idea there was a continuity of something to the next, but yes, uh, that is correct. Exteriors, and then we would pick up. Question, did they tell you your lines? No, I, because I, you're I mean, little, like, and you probably didn't read very well. No, I was, uh, hey, oh, okay. I read real well, Mary. Come on. Uh, no, I actually. Okay, all right. Read, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, when you're. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. The the lines when I was six were, you know, where's daddy? I mean, it's not hard to remember those yeah. things. But as I got older, you know, they'd give me more. But I would I would work with mm -hmm. my dad um, heavily, you know, a few days before and learn the lines and go over it and memorize it. And yeah, I'd be ready to go. I, I was pretty good at it. At least the I don't know if I was a great actor or what, but I, I knew my lines. Cool. Well, they kept you around long enough, so. They did. I mean, they, yeah. that one it's fan kept me going. So I guess whoever was the right person uh, <laughs> sent enough emails or, or letters in to uh, keep me on the show. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was those parents and grandparents just constantly writing in. Keep, yeah. keep them on there. Keep them on there. <laughs> How many times I meet people that are like my age that are like, it was always Dallas was always on on Friday night at nine o'clock in our house, uh, but I never watched it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, you shouldn't have if you were my age or a child on the show. It was, uh, no. yeah, it was. Dude, that's that's the thing is like we should not have been watching it. And yeah. I I can only be like, well, I guess it was '80s parents like my, you know, they weren't paying attention. Um, and that's actually why I'm I started this podcast is because I loved the show so much as like a little kid. And now I'm watching it as an adult going, what about the, <laughs> the show subject matters a made me rich. love this when I was eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think most of it went over my head, but I well also think Mary, just crazy at that time. I mean, everyone knows this. It's not anything new, but there was such limited programming and the ability to sort of, like now yeah. we have so much, so much to choose from, but it was appointment TV, right? right. You can only watch it, it linearly pretty, at it nine o'clock. Things yeah. to go up. Exactly. Yeah. No VCRs so, to record. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was just like, right. that was, that's what you did on Friday night. You had a plan and it was a ritual. And some people mm -hmm. use that ritual to spend time with their family. It was a way that families connected over the TV at that time too. So anyway, we could go I mean, on. That's what we did in my family. Yeah. Same. Same. And they, they, it was the incredible Hulk, the Dukes of Hazard in Dallas, Friday night. There you yep. go. <laughs>
There you go. Well, uh, excited to see everyone out at South Fork. Um, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, everyone at South Fork and.